The Sims 4 is over six years old, so it's becoming very common to see people hoping for Sims 5 to be announced. Say what you will, but I'm sensing some of you are ready to flock to something new, even if it's to a competitor. Yes, I made plum bob moths. No, I don't know why. No, they don't make that sound. It's bats. <laughs> Maxis needs to win back some skeptics and make a great first impression with the next game. If they don't build the game with a focus on healing its image, the franchise could be left twitching on the ground. <laughs> Let's look at what they need to get right on the first try. I'm going to open this video with a big positive and something you've done really right, Maxis. You made building fun for a lot of people and really did building well this time around. I don't have to tell you that you should be innovating, so just don't take a step backward on this and you'll be fine in that area. But I'm going to turn on you a bit here because it needs to be said. Sims 4 wasn't ready, and you know in your hearts that it wasn't, so don't slip pools into a patch months later this time around. If it's a common thing a house might have, it should probably be in Sims 5 from the first day. I think you should put in spiral staircases and bunk beds on release day to make up for that nonsense. This gives us something that we want while also proving that you do still know how to make a Sim walk in a circle. God. I'd say that personality is the single most important thing for players who actually play the game. If I make a hot-headed sim, they should be quick to actually behave in an angry way and get into more arguments autonomously. Traits should not just cover the objects a sim uses autonomously, but actually change how you'll play a sim and give them strengths, weaknesses, and unique behaviors. Did I say traits, though? You don't have to have traits. Sim 2 used a system of points to define personality. Your points gave you your traits. You could be either neat or a slob, grouchy or nice. A stats-based system like this could work well, but only if the stats are detailed enough. Getting personality right is really, really important for replay value on a game that many people clock hundreds or thousands of hours in. In general, the older Sims titles did this well, so I would hope Maxis looked to them for inspiration. Around launch, you seem to have thought you brought more personality to the Sims, but you didn't. Look, Maxis, there are plenty of things to offer us, so fairly basic stuff like hot tubs do not need to be behind a paywall to boost your sales. If you do other things right, people will buy your game. I know you're not used to having competition, but there are about a million sets of eyeballs on a potential competitor right now. Better bring your A-game next time and offer players some value. Yes, open world has been hammered into the ground. I know some people say they prefer performance over the open world, but it shouldn't have to be that way. Modern hardware should be capable of simulating an open world, and Sims 3 did this passably in 2009. The game was far from unplayable, especially with mods, so 11 years of hardware advancement should allow for an open world by default. If you combine this with collecting and crafting, you'll give players a reason to explore the worlds you create. Like other things that do nothing, having too many collections that aren't involved in anything is boring. And the open world is needed for one reason, to be a justification for cars and other forms of transportation. Most of Sims 4's neighborhoods give you no reason to care if you have a bike or not, and bikes are, well, yeah. Uh, cars offer one more area where we can improve our Sims and enjoy watching them splurge on a fancy overpriced car. Cars need to be in the Sims 5 base game, and I say this because if cars were supported from the beginning in 4, you wouldn't have waited this long. The Sims 5 needs to bring back wishes or wants and fears from Sims 2. You can call it something different if it makes you feel better, but these were impactful, and in a way reflected Sims' personality better than anything else could. Trait-based wishes encourage you to play a Sim in a different way. This is an important addition to the gameplay loop and becomes a part of it naturally if they matter. Players would use them if they'd provide enough points and offer enough variety in things Sims want to do. 
That way players care and you don't just offer an option to turn it off instead of actually fixing it. When Maxis releases new expansions, people get done with them in like five hours lately. If any of those had goals you might work toward that are not simply hit level 10 in one narrow area, the game would be a lot more fun. Do some work building out a late game experience in Sims 5. Things only rich Sims can do. And things that involve using multiple skills together or finding rare collectibles. Maybe require more foods to actually have ingredients and make those top end foods do something interesting. There are lots of little things you can throw in that will add some replay value to the game or at least let a person play one game longer without it getting so repetitive. Look, I'm begging you on this one. Bring back the traditions you once followed. Expansions should always have new traits and new long-term goals. That way, when people have crossed the $500 line spending money on the things they bought from you, they don't feel regret that the game has not been expanded. I, I feel like lately you've been selling people things they want to build with more so than any form of gameplay. It is still a game, right? I've already brought this up a couple times in my videos, so I'll be brief. Level 10 should not be the end of a skill, Maxis. The skill journal from Sims 3 was amazing, and those unique rewards were fun to pursue because they were not too easy. You seem to have forgotten one of the most innovative features that brought some replay value to your own game. Look, I don't feel like being assaulted today, so I'm not going to say Sims 5 should be an online game, but it should support at least the current online functionality. You should never, ever require the internet to play a Sims game, but your gallery and the sharing functions you have are pretty nice and you did a good thing there. As long as it's optional, I don't think anyone will give you any flack for continuing in this direction. It could be cool to drop into a friend's game just as an optional side feature, but we kind of already have an example of how badly it can go to design a game around being online and change your mind. I get so sick of clicking seven menus deep to find some specific thing I want to say or do for a task. I want to see Sims 5 have better organization and less pointless fluff. Socials that don't do anything aren't fun to use. So keep them out of the game or put them at the end of the menu at the very least. It's easy. If we'll use it a lot, put it in the front. Only rarely use, put it last. Now someone asked me if I'm a mermaid one more time. <laughs> Sorry. If Maxis builds Sims 5 from the ground up to support customization, it should not be insanely hard for us to get basic options. You know what's missing here? Sliders. Lots and lots of sliders and menu options. It's probably feared they'll overwhelm people, but restricting others isn't the solution. Just make good defaults. We need options for how many occults should be in the game. Check boxes for weather types we accept. So you don't have people asking how to disable seasons, but keep all the other shit they bought. Seriously, sometimes we get sick of mechanics and just want to play the game, but keep the other stuff we paid for. I'd personally love to turn off city living festivals and cloudy days. While you're at it, Sims team, please use things from other games that make sense in The Sims. For example, RimWorld and Civilization. Ever seen how many options those games have? This would do a lot to help the challenge scene. So let's say you want to globally modify the amounts of money that are earned, reduce skill gains, or make it really effing hard to make friends. Or maybe even just permanently make needs static. Yes, people can use MC Command Center to do a lot on PC, but people shouldn't need to turn to mods as a solution. Our forum has had challenges for nine years, and we still host a tournament every year, and I'll say thank you to Metro and his team. Game companies love live services because they can milk one game for as much cash as possible with minimized risk. While we might like the content we get sometimes, we don't like live services. Why? Because the gaming industry uses them as a means to ship unfinished products. 
if someone bought the base game from you, it should stand the test of time as a standalone game without any further updates. So please finish before you release it so you don't spend six years catching up. The base game's quality is pivotal. In case you wonder, no, I don't have any insider knowledge of Sims 5 development. What I do have is intuition, and it's not just the obvious time factor. It's the fact that Maxis seems to be operating Sims 4 on a skeleton crew when compared to the 200 or so people I've read they employ. So yeah, they're probably working on it now, and it'll be ready when it's done. Or rushed out if Sims 4 suddenly stops being viable as an IRL moneymaker. Well, like this if you agree. Dislike it if you disagree. Tell me why I'm wrong. Like everyone else, I do have Patreon and YouTube channel memberships if you would like to give me your money. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching.